everybody. It's been a little while since I've done a car vlog video, so I figured it was time because I've had some things on my mind recently and I wanted to share with you all and get some feedback from you all as well because I am sure that I am not the only one who has struggled with or is struggling with some burnout on your fire journey. If this happens to be your first video on my channel, welcome. Um, my name's Rebecca. I live in North Carolina. I'm 35. I am pursuing financial independence to retire early on a single income. And that is the whole purpose of my YouTube channel here is to document that journey. And I do work in healthcare. I'm a third shift worker. I do ultrasound for a living and I work in an emergency department. So just those facts right there alone should be enough to probably give you a teeny tiny hint about the burnout that I'm going to discuss in this video. So yeah, if you are interested in the financial independence retire early topic, if you find motivation in watching others trying to pursue this journey, then subscribe down below and follow me because it's it's going to be a little while before I can reach fire. And this video is likely going to be very minimally edited. I've just been struggling with a lot of burnout lately, guys. I'm not feeling motivated. And I should clarify that in that I am as motivated as ever to get to fire because God knows this last 18 months has been a challenge. If you do anything in healthcare or if you're a frontline worker, then you know firsthand how shitty this last 18 months has been, right? So if anything, that has made my desire for fire greater. But at the same time, physically and mentally, the burnout is there, guys. Like, I'm tired. I'm tired. And I feel bad even putting that out there because me working in ultrasound, like, it could be so much worse, right? If I was a nurse dealing with COVID patients for my entire shift, if I was a respiratory therapist having to deal one-on-one -on -one with my, with COVID patients for my entire shift, but ultrasound, you know, my exposure has been, I wouldn't say minimal, but less than what others have had to deal with. So you know, I do need to say that, that I do kind of feel guilty about even complaining about this at all. But at the same time, it doesn't change the fact that the burnout is happening. And what I wanted to get some feedback from you all is, if you're on this journey yourself, if you're pursuing fire, how do you balance the mindset of make hay while the sun shines, versus prioritizing your mental and physical health and maybe working less and extending that timeline for you to get to fire. Because I have noticed on my own journey that for me personally, it varies wildly. Like sometimes I am just super motivated, gung-ho, give me all the work hours, I will make all the YouTube videos, to give me all the side hustles and extra income I can get and I will throw everything at fire. And then other times I am like now, where the motivation to do extra is just not as strong as it is at other times. So that was a very long way to say or to ask, how do you balance the two in your own fire journey? I would love to hear in the comment section down below because this is something that I'm seriously struggling with. Y'all know that um, I have a boyfriend who is on the fire path and he's in the fire movement and I got some good feedback from him because he's farther along in the journey than I am. The feedback I got from him was to listen to your body and I think that that's probably about as good of advice as you could get from anybody. That's something that for me is easier said than done when it comes right down to it because if you've been following me for a while on the channel, then you know that I tend to work a lot of overtime at work. I get opportunities to pick up extra shifts and 99% of the time, I am going to take those opportunities to bring in extra income and put it to work for me. 
But on the other hand of that equation, me working third shift like I do, it really is a physically draining schedule that I have and I do have a long commute to work. I do 12 hour shifts and my commute one way to work is at least an hour and five minutes, anywhere from an hour and five to an hour and 15 minutes, depending how bad the traffic is. So, you know, that turns a 12 hour day into a 14 and a half hour day. <laughs> And, you know, it's all night shifts, so it's, it's physically draining. But at the same time, the money is there. You know, it's a benefit to me to work third shift because I get a differential and the overtime is nice when I can get it. And if you've been watching the news recently, then you may have seen headlines about the great resignation, right? How people are shuffling jobs right now, and not just in healthcare, but in a lot of different job fields, people are kind of moving and shuffling around, right? Well, that has held true for my own workplace. We're having, um, well, we have one person who is leaving for another job. We have another full-time person who is going out for at least eight weeks for surgery. We have another full-time person who's actually retiring soon. And those three full-time people are going to be leaving all around the same time. So what may happen for me personally here is I might actually have the opportunity to pick up a full-time shift overnight for one of these girls. And I'm weighing the pros and cons of doing that because I know if I take on the shift of this person who is going to be out, then that means for eight weeks, I'll be working six 12-hour shifts at night a week. So one night off a week, 72 hours work weeks for eight weeks. And that's a lot, <laughs> to put it lightly. And I struggle with whether or not I should actually do it. But guys, like when I actually started looking into the math of it, I... I don't think that I can turn that down if I get that opportunity. What would you do if you were me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Because again, if you've been following me for a while, then you know I have a goal, right, of paying off this car that I bought a couple months ago as quickly as I can. And having that extra money come in would be a huge help to that. And I thought also that that extra money would not only help in paying down my car, but I could set aside an extra $6,000 and just have it on hand for 2022 whenever it's time to fund my Roth IRA again for 2022. I could have that money set aside and just ready to dump in whenever I felt like it in 2022 and I wouldn't have to worry about saving up for it, right? So I could do that and I would still have leftover extra money to throw at this car and get it paid down as well and that is highly tempting for me. And to kind of further sweeten the deal, I don't know if you are also in healthcare, but you may have heard on the news that there are a lot of hospital systems out there who are offering bonus pay for people taking on extra shifts during these COVID times. We're having a huge Delta surge right now. And when I heard about this girl that's going out for eight weeks, I knew I could cover that shift in theory, even though it would be a lot of extra shifts, I could do it. And I thought to myself, well, rather than just volunteer to cover her shift for those eight weeks, Maybe I should email my boss lady and just see if the company that I work for would be willing to give me double time for those extra shifts that I'm taking on. Because I know that the hospital system that I work for has been offering bonus pay for some departments during these COVID times. Now, so far they've only offered double time for the imaging department for one month so far this year and actually all of the shifts that needed covered during that month got gobbled up so quickly I couldn't even get an extra shift during that month so yeah that just goes to show you like how willing some people are to work for double time but if we just need coverage last minute or if somebody's going to be out then all of a sudden overtime is not good enough they want more than that but anyway, I digress from that. I didn't get any of the double time shifts before, so 
I'm hoping that maybe they will approve me to get double time for these extra three nights a week that I would be covering if they let me cover for this person going out. And to be honest, if, if they did let me cover these shifts and they gave me double time for it, I don't see any way that I could turn this down, y'all. I'm just gonna have to pick myself up by the bootstraps and put my nose to the grindstone for eight weeks and make the hay while the sun shines, right? I mean, double time, I could not turn that down. I would have to just find a way to press forward and make it happen. But if they turn down my request for double time and it's just regular overtime, should I still do it? I think honestly that I'm leaning towards yes, I should, because it still would be a lot of extra money working 72 hours a week. That, that would be a lot of extra overtime pay that I could definitely put to good use. So I think if they let me cover these shifts, but they tell me it's only gonna be my regular overtime rate, then I'll probably still do it. But there is a chance that I may not get to do any of these extra shifts at all. Um, I know that my boss lady has been looking into getting either like one or two traveler ultrasound techs in to help cover some of these shifts since we're having so many people go out. So it may be that they just get enough travelers in to cover these positions and I won't, you know, get the opportunity for any extra shifts. But I mean, I know that if you are a traveler in any type of position in healthcare, you make bank when you are working as a travel tech or a travel nurse, whatever it is. So, I mean, I know it's gonna be expensive for my company to hire on a travel tech and they're gonna have to, I think at least one. <laughs> since we're having so many people leave or go out or retire. So, I mean, I think we're gonna need at least one, but I'm sure that it would probably be less money for them to pay me double time for these extra shifts than it would be for them to hire a travel tech at a travel rate of pay for 12 or 13 weeks, which is how long a travel tech contract is for you know, they would only need to pay me the double time for the extra shifts for those eight weeks. So overall, I think it would be cheaper for my company to just let me do those extra shifts rather than hire in a travel tech. But I have, you know, emailed my boss lady to ask about the double time and covering these shifts and, you know, told her that I would do it for double time. And I haven't heard anything back from her yet besides just that she's working on it. So. You know, I don't know yet if I'm gonna be able to do these shifts or not. If by the time I'm editing this video, if I hear anything, I'll put in a little insert here or something. But as of right now, I don't even know if any of this is gonna happen. But if it does, I would love to hear y'all's experience about burnout on your path to FI, especially if you are in healthcare and you've been working during all of this virus times like I have, how are you balancing that? I've seen a lot of posts lately on Facebook and some of the Choose FI groups that I'm in about nurses and other healthcare people who are taking on a bunch of extra shifts and making absolute bank. I mean, some of these nurses are easily making six figures plus a year. Some of them $200,000 a year or more taking on extra shifts during these times because hospitals are desperate for help right now. So. Yeah, if you're in healthcare and you've been doing this, I would love to hear your experience and how you find some mental health and clarity during all of this and how you stay sane and find a balance picking up all of these extra shifts. But even if you're not in healthcare and you've been doing extra work in whatever field you're in, I know that these are just crazy times all around. There's a lot of industries out there who are desperate for help and if you're willing, to put in the hours then you can work and if you've been putting in extra hours i'd love to hear your experience too down below have you found that it's been worth it have you been able to strike a balance between working those extra shifts and getting that extra money but also stay insane i would love to know how <laughs> so yeah let me know in the comment section down below because i've been struggling with it lately you guys and fact of the matter is i consider what i would be doing if I don't get these extra shifts, right? And the honest to God truth right now is that if I wasn't working these extra shifts, I do have some projects at home to work on. But besides working on those projects, 
Like honestly, otherwise I would probably just be sitting at home and feeling depressed about being separated from my loved ones. Y'all know if you've been following me recently that I have a boyfriend, he's Swedish, he lives in Sweden. And I was lucky to be able to travel over there in August and see him for a week and a half. And no sooner than I get back home and the European Union has shut down to American travelers again. So here we are being separated again and having to wait this out. So, you know, if I'm not working either at my job or working on some project at home, then I've been struggling a little bit lately with depression also because it just sucks being separated from people that you love. And I know that I'm not the only one going through this. There's a lot of families that live in other countries and because of everything that has been going on in the last 18 months, travel has been crazy. Either you can do it or you can't, or there's different restrictions depending on what countries you're going to and what countries you're traveling through. It's just been crazy, y'all, and it's one other thing that is exhausting and weighing on me. So, yeah. I guess this video is probably long enough already. So, yeah, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and listened to my ramblings thus far, I appreciate you as always. Let me know in the comment section down below if burnout is something that you're struggling with on the path to Phi, and if you've got any tips for the rest of us on this journey, leave it down in the comment section below because I think at this point, after 18 months of this illness going around, we're all tired of it to some varying degree. So yeah, I think we could all use a little motivation. So if you have any, leave it down in the comment section below. I'll catch y'all in my next video. Bye guys.